question to Ms. Catherine, please. Okay. Remember where I was going to start. All right. You wake up in the morning and you go outside. And you're bending over to pick up the paper, and you see a lion walk by. You're still in Southern California. There's nothing wrong with this. You're just in the wrong time period. Lions, cheetahs, hyenas, elephants. We had them all as little as 10,000 years ago. We're going a little further back today. 14,000 years ago, California was a very different place. And this might have been on your front lawn. In the Pleistocene, which was the last ice age, the there was a glacier over most of the state. And we also had about 300 more feet of land. So we had 100 meters that the sea level was much lower. So there was a lot more land. And if you went outside, it would look more like the African savanna than the modern California. Um, everything was grasslands. And as you might expect, in grasslands, there are a lot of animals. And I'm going to tell you today about a few of the animals that lived in your backyard 10,000 years ago. A lot of things lived here in the Ice Age. We had buffalo, bison. We had a giant camel. We had antelope and deer, which still live here today. We had a horse that looks kind of like half a zebra have not. The more interesting ones, though, for me are the predators. We had a bear that stood 14 feet tall. We had the Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat. We had a wolf that's back would be to here on me, standing on all fours. We had cheetahs that actually just went, went extinct about 3,000 years ago. As far as anything else goes, we had mammoths, not the woolly kind. We had a mammoth called the Columbian mammoth. Basically looked like a giant elephant. You've seen a pattern in these names. Giant camel, giant elephant, giant condor. Everything was huge. We had the giant ground sloth, which you might notice looks more like a bear than anything else. Um, these are the big ones. We had the Columbian mammoth. 13 feet tall, 10 tons, bigger than any living pachyderm today. Um, you see the long straight tusks, not the spiraling tusks of the woolly mammoth. We had the mastodon, which was about the size of an Indian elephant today, 9 feet tall. It was covered in fur. You see how big it was compared to a person, but it doesn't have the sloping back of a mammoth. They also could have four tusks, which is rare to actually find fossilized because the bottom ones break off. Um, we had the giant camel. Giant camel is fun for paleontologists because no one can decide on a species name. There are so few fossils that have been found that we don't actually know if it's a different species in different parts of the world or one that ranged everywhere. The giant ground sloth could be looking in that window right now, standing on the ground. 17 feet tall on its hind legs. It's one foot shorter than a giraffe, to give you an idea. Um, it had huge claws on its hands, which it would use to pull down trees. And it would also eat meat very rarely. We have found evidence of it being an omnivore, more like a bear than an herbivore. And here are the predators, the two main ones. Save to the cat. Cat, not tiger. It has no relation to the tiger. Saber tooth tiger is a misname. The saber tooth cat is not related to any animal still alive today. And its teeth were up to seven inches long and brittle. If it were to bite into something that was still struggling, they would snap off. So they hunted in packs. They would pin the creature down and then slice its throat. That's how they would kill it. The dire wolf were much like hyenas of today to the Smilodon's lions. Broader skull and thicker limbs. 
their jaws could give 25,000 pounds of pressure per square inch, shatter any bone they bite on. They are the most common fossil at Fulbright tar pits. With every breath today that you inhale, you are pulling in over a million oxygen and nitrogen atoms that were once breathed by an ancient creature. It's part of all of us. And someday, someday soon, they might be breathing again. It was just announced on Thursday that the entire genome of the woolly mammoth has been mapped. We might be cloning them within the next 10 years. And thank you all for listening. I want those.